Hey there and welcome! In this short video I want to give you a high-level overview of the components that make up the Windows IDE so that you can know your way around and know what each thing does. And so we're going to be taking a look at the menu bar that's right at the top, then under it you'll find the toolbar, and under it you'll find the language bar. Then the session is this big region right here that we're going to also cover, then we'll talk about the editor and debugger windows, which are currently not visible, and we'll finish at the status bar that's at the very bottom of your screen. So, starting from the top, the menu bar should be the most familiar, or the one that you're most familiar with, because plenty of programs have menu bars. And it's just a place with a series of tabs that contain things you can toggle, select, options you can open, actions you can take, etc. For example, the session tab Sorry, not the session tab. The options tab has this configure button right here that opens plenty of configurations for you to play around with. And say the action tab has this interrupt action that's very useful when you write code that has been taking forever to finish. You can interrupt it with this action. Then after the menu bar, sorry, not after, under the menu bar, you can find the toolbar. And the name really says what it is. The toolbar is just a bar that contains a bunch of tools. And these are here just for the convenience of having clickable buttons that represent common actions that you might want to take. So it's just a convenience thing for you. And you can hover a button to see what it corresponds to. And at the very, at the, at the far right, um, at the right end of the toolbar, you can find a, a drop down for you to change your font and even your font size if you want to make it larger or smaller, etc. Then under the toolbar you can find your language bar and the language bar contains all of the APL glyphs like you can see here. And the, the, the main two purposes of the language bar are to one, help you type APL glyphs, so say this symbol right here, this is not, like my physical keyboard does not have this symbol, so if I'm starting out as an APLer, um, I might not know how to type this, so I can come to the language bar and I can press these buttons right here, and the glyphs end up in my session, which is right here. And then, you all probably already noticed this, if I hover a symbol, so if I put my cursor on top of a symbol, I get this nice tooltip that tells me the name of the symbol and then the keyboard shortcut to type it and then the name of that symbol as a monadic function in this case, as a dyadic function. It also has a couple of usage examples and it even has a link to the documentation. So the language bar can also serve as a quick reference if you, if you suddenly forget what a symbol is for or it can actually teach you a little bit of the symbol. So if you see a new symbol you can just put the cursor on top of it and you'll learn in a, in a couple of lines, you'll learn the main usage for that symbol. Then, as I typed symbols, you noticed those were inserted in here. So this region right here is the session. And when you open your editor, the session is populated with some version information, some licensing information, and the current date and time. And then under it, you can type your APL code and you can press enter to evaluate it and then you get the results. And you'll notice that by default, the, the place where you, where you type things is a little bit further to the right and the results show up on the left. And this is just to make it easier to distinguish the things you typed from the results you got. So it's just a, a, really a thing to make it easier for you to read your session log. Now, I want to talk to you about the editor window. So let's say that I want to open my editor window. So I'm going to call my quad ed function and let's say that I want to edit my error fun. So the editor window really is the place where you're going to probably do most of your editing of functions and operators and other things. And so just as an example that's going to be useful for the debugger window, let me define a function that the only thing it does is to error. So it's going to error because these three dots, this is not valid APL code. So now that I've defined my function, what I can do is I can press escape and this closes the editor window 
and it fixes my function. So now if I'm in the session if, and if I start typing the name of the function, we can see that auto completion suggests the remainder of the name. And now let's say I'm going to call my function with the argument 10. Now if I run it, I get a syntax error because my code was not correct. And when I get the error, the debugger window pops up. So this thing right here at the bottom of the session is the debugger window. And it contains two main sections. So it has this one on the left that shows the code that errors. And then it shows this thing here on the right, which is the stack. And it just tells me, it just helps me locate where my error was. So if I have functions calling other functions, calling other functions, calling other functions, the stack right here would reflect what called what. So I could know, so I would be in a better position to understand the problem that really happened. And when the debugger window is open, we are in a debugging session. And what this means is that we can interact with the state of the program when the error occurred. So for example, if I type omega, we can see that omega is 10. Why? Because when I called my error function, I gave it as a right argument, the value 10. When you're done debugging, what you can do is you can press escape again, just like in the editor window and the debugging window closes and we are no longer in a debugging session. So for example, if I try to check the value of omega, we can see it's even colored in red. And if I press enter, I get the syntax error because I cannot use omega outside of functions. And then lastly, the last component I wanted to talk uh, about that I wanted to mention is the status bar. That's at the very, sorry about that, at the very bottom of the session. And over here on the right, it has the, well, the name of the status bar really tells you what it is. It's a bar that contains the status of some things. For example, of a couple of useful variables like quad ml, quad io, and one that I find very helpful, quad si, which is currently set to zero. So when these are in black, it means that everything is at its default value. But now let me show you what happens when I call my error function and I get the error, we can see that quad si changes colors and it was previously set to zero, but it's now set to one. And this number being different from zero tells me that some function is interrupted. So I'm in a debugging session. Even if I close my debugger window like this, so I click the cross at the top right and I close the debugger window, but I did not finish the debugging session. So I'm still debugging and I can know that because quad si is not zero. So be aware of that. Now, if my debugger window is closed, I can open it again by going to action trace. So this opens the debugger window again. And for example, now I could press escape to finish my debugger session or my debugging session. Notice that quad si was set to zero again and I'm no longer debugging. So this was the high level overview I wanted to give you. We took a look at the menu bar at the top the status bar that was under it, then the language bar. We looked at the session, we typed some APL code in it. I showed you the editor window that usually goes on the right in here, but it's now currently, oh, sorry, empty. I also showed you the debugger window, which goes typically on the bottom, but it is also empty right now. And then the status bar that's at the very bottom of your screen.